and we will have the Black Forest Collect Collective joining us um, to share a few insights into um, the ancient German beech forest. We're just waiting. I, I think they're already here. Um, yeah, so I want to welcome um, Simon. Um, whenever you're ready, please. Um, hi. Hi, I'm Yoshi. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm the I second saw... part of the team. All right. Yeah. Hi, welcome. But I think Simon. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I think yes, Simon I think is just, around. He just yeah. arrived. So, hi, Simon. Yeah. Turn okay. on my video. There I am. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so the floor is yours. Yeah. Thanks for having us um, today or this week. Um, on the agenda and um, yeah maybe we'll just introduce ourselves briefly then we'll show the film and then we'll talk uh, a bit later on um, so for myself I'm Simon I'm uh, 26 years old from Freiburg in Germany and uh, I've been doing films for the last 10 years probably just always out in nature we, I mean I'm speaking for myself but also for our entire team love nature and uh, we love telling stories about um, wild places uh, and that's something that brought me and the team together in the, um, a few years ago and has led us on a funny journey of um, yeah visiting amazing places and capturing them um, but the person who's mostly behind the big camera with the long events is my colleague Yoshi yeah um, <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm Yoshi from Mainz, close to Frankfurt. And I'm, yeah, I think since I started to go to school, I went always out into the nature and um, just enjoy the nature around. And earlier I started as well to take a camera with me and yeah, just be fascinated with the flying birds and the big mammals and yeah finally I found uh, this wonderful collective in the south of Germany and Simon to join them and yeah go into the deep forests of Germany or of Europe entirely, entirely and yeah just capture what I can find. <laughs> So um, yeah, just two more uh, sentences before we show the film. Um, so our work really started in 2014 when the uh, Black Forest National Park was established, which is also our home really close to us. And then uh, we thought, how about we just do a film series on the, four se the first four seasons in the Black Forest National Park. Um, and then we spent over a year capturing all the moments and the seasons and spend a lot of time out in nature and that's just how we came together as a team and then two years later we got approached by the um, German uh, UNESCO committee to make another film about uh, uh, five um, world heritages of the ancient beach forests and um, that's the film that we would like to show today. Um, I have a YouTube link right here uh, which is now shared in the, in the discussion and I guess we're just going to um, be quiet for the next 14 minutes for you to watch it and then we can jump right back into the discussion. All right. Thank you for sharing that with us, Simon and Yoshi. I don't know if you're still here. Yes, perfect. <laughs> it was a really, really beautiful footage. Maybe you can give us a little bit more insight in how, yeah, how it was to do that. Uh, yeah, maybe Yoshi, you want to go ahead. <laughs> you did a lot of the work. <laughs> uh, we can't hear you, I think. You're muted. You're, you're muted. Now, right now? Yeah, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, like filming uh, wild animals is very intensive work for me. It's like um, first I have to know where are the animals and I have to yeah get a lot of know-how about the biology and how they are living, the behaviors. And then that's the most important uh, point for me because when I get in touch with wilderness, I don't want to disturb too much. Yeah, it's, it's I can't disturb anything if I just if I go into nature. I'm always like, yeah, there's something um, not normal. Yeah, a human, and um, so. But to be, yeah, for, that's why it's for me very important to. Um, work with a lot of respect of the animals, with a lot of know-how. And then I um, just hiding very well and waiting for these animals. And I'm always very passive. So um, I use a lot of camouflage. Uh, how do you say it? Yeah, like um, in the background of me, you can see the stuff. <laughs> like a lot of, um, yeah, gears that the animals can't see me. And um, that's very important. That's a, the most important thing. It's not the technical part. That's not my thing. It's more like, you know, where are living the people, uh, the, uh, the animals and um, what are the, their behaviors and their biology. And then I find this, yeah, very intensive moment. Very, yeah. And these moments, what is for me a big fascination, I really want to spread to the world and, and that's why I'm just filming this. Yeah. And what I yeah. can add as well is basically that we, I mean, first and foremost, I mean, at least speaking for myself, we're, we're still filmmakers and we're not biologists or ornithologists uh, so we we're not really specific to know how we don't we don't know everything about nature and it's incredibly it's an incredible learning curve to go out and film all these uh, things that we film because we're always learning so much and it's just so eye-opening to hang out with like these experts and all the um, specific biosphere reserves and national parks and protected areas um, where we just go go to places and we meet these fascinating rangers on the ground who've known an area for like 20 years and then they just show us where um, where to find what and then um, we're just learning so much about the different um, parts <laughs> that we're filming and so it's always um, it's great. Nice. Um, um, we've got a just, question here yeah, from Timothy. Yeah. He asks, whereabouts in Germany did you film and which part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site did you guys find the most fascinating? There are five parts. Um, one is in the National Park uh, Jasmund on the island Rügen. And then there's the Müritz National Park. And it's always like a little island in a national park what is more protected, protected from the um, UNESCO. And then we have the Bios 7. Uh, yeah, and, and then the, the Heinich and the Kellerwald and the Seran mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, so these are the five, five areas in Germany. And the Biosphere Reservoir, um, Schorfheide Korin. Yeah. Like, yeah. Seran in the Müritz National Park and yeah, Heinich National Park. Yeah, always, yeah, how I did, how you say it, like islands in the national parks and um, yeah. Okay, so what, what was your, your favorite one, if you can decide? I would, I would go for Seran. It was just, I think, the most to me the most wild because it just really hasn't been it, it just for for some miraculous reason really for some miraculous reason nobody touched it in the last hundreds of years and it's just even through the wars and and just a lot of just it just stayed the way it is and now you can really see that in the in the woods and that's 
that was really fascinating to me. Yes, same for me. But in every single uh, part, you have, yeah, you can find and discover a lot and get in touch with the wilderness and have magic moments. Yeah, that must be a really unique experience. Like you said, you can enter in these core zones that not many people are able to go. So it's really nice that you share your insights with us. <laughs> Um, so Hannah asks, um, what is the future of wildlife filmmaking? How can the industry be reformed to better serve the planet and the public? What's, what's your take on that? I, I have, um, I maybe use that as a um, reason to jump into the second part of our presentation. Uh, we still have a few slides which might answer a part of that question and we can still see if that question is still a little bit open. Perfect, go ahead. <laughs> So basically, because we really, um, it's, it's a great chance for us to share basically our future um, uh, now, uh, what, what's ahead for us um, in terms of wildlife filmmaking. Basically, we, we did this film um, in 2016, but we also realized that, I mean, like using only landscapes and a voiceover is kind of like the old... BBC style of making nature documentaries and we, we thought about ways to, to bring it into the modern times and make it more accessible, especially for young people because these are the people who need to be aware of the beauty, who need to protect it in the future. And um, that's when we came up with our concept for Wild Europe, um, which is essentially a, a journey that will take us um, across national parks in, in all of Europe over the next years. And uh, we're going to tell stories about local heroes that protect or share the beauty of their home in some way or another, who are like really passionate about their national park and their protected area, who want to share that with the world. So in the last basically like 14 months, we have visited there are four places in Europe, which were the Tatra Mountains in Poland, where we um, portrayed a young mountaineer and her daughter, uh, just exploring and sharing this message of like adventures close to home. Then we accompany the free diver Daniel, who's uh, uh, dived in Sicily in the marine protected area Maritimo to share also the plastic pollution in the oceans and his fight against it. We portrayed a ranger um, in Montenegro, Michan, in the Dormitor National Park. And just recently, we've actually come back from Gesäuse National Park in Austria, where we shot a short documentary on Romana Netzberg, who's a, a biologist working on the, um, basically the mass extinction of, of insects and just to, to, to shed a light on this part of the the ecosystem and to make people aware that it's not always the big animals that matter but also um, the the small ones and we're trying to do this in a way to, to keep it short to keep it engaging and um, in in about a year or two we're, we're planning to go on tour for Europe with these short films they're all about like five minutes long um, and just basically we want to keep them short to go to schools because young people have a very short attention span and we really want to catch them and not like bore them. So that's why we're going for these short formats um, to basically like inspire um, young people. And um, basically just using, using a chance. Now we, we're doing this project on our own terms. So we self-funded. And what we're looking for right now is basically incredible characters. That's all we need. We're looking for people who are really passionate about nature and have an incredible story and an urgent message to tell. And I felt that today there might be a few people among this group who fit exactly that. Um, so uh, that's just a, a call out to everyone here, like to reach out to us and to let us know if you know anyone or if you are someone if you have an urgent message that the world needs to see and share, like we're, we're ready to take on the, this message and, and help you share it because that's that's what we're passionate about. 
I'm sure that um, during this conference, many people presented that would fit um, the profile. So maybe what you can do is you can share your contact details in the chat and then whoever wants to contact you can. Um, just make sure that you enable it that the viewers and the panelists can see it. Oh, yeah. Done, yeah. Perfect, exactly. Um, so yeah, and also, I mean, you've, you've access to the schedule of our events. So if there's anybody that you guys are interested, you can um, maybe even contact us or contact them directly and we'll see you, um, where you can go from there. <laughs> Thank you so much for your, for your presentation, for your videos, for, for joining us here and good luck for the future. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much for having us. <laughs> Have a great day. You too.